sitting here. Um, who? <laughs> created a show called The Simpsons. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, I guess I guess you've all been gathered here to answer my questions. <laughs> or maybe it's the other way around. So uh, yeah, uh, we can get it started, I guess. If anybody wants to just uh, ask away. I understand you did the voices for all the characters. Um, uh, I guess, uh, well, how did you get into voice acting? Well, um, undergrads was my entry into voice acting. Um, I mean, as a kid, you know, I, I think Pee Wee Herman was probably the, the first impression I ever did at eight years old. But it just, did you do it? Pee Wee? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, I can't. Eight years old, I could do it. Perfect. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's just it snowballed from there, and uh, you know, I was just trying to mimic different voices in cartoons. And my friends and I would, you know, do horrible impressions of each other's voices, and that's where Cal's voice came from. <laughs> <laughs> the, the real Cal really doesn't sound like that, but uh, it has the right inflection. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was uh, undergrads came about because of a contest uh, that MTV was sponsoring, and. Um, I entered the contest, it was for creating a character screen test, uh, doing pencil test animation of a character or characters, talking to the camera about themselves, and um, in their voice. And so I just hung out with my three best friends from high school, we were home for college, uh, from home for college over winter break, and uh, I was like, oh, I'll just do a show based on, on these guys. Uh, I already can do the voices. <laughs> so, uh, so I did the pencil test animation. I just did these, you know, really lame impressions of us, and uh, and ended up winning the contest. And that's how uh, Undergrads was first born. At that point, it was called The Click, and uh, I got a development deal with MTV. And uh, several years later, after going through development, uh, it finally ended up on the air. Uh, I have not done voice acting since. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a panel tomorrow on voice acting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Do you think we'll ever see another season? We are diligently trying to get something off the ground for a second season. Uh, around this time last year, probably a little bit earlier, we were invited to a convention in Calgary. When I say we, uh, myself and two of the show's co-developers, Josh Kagan and Andy Reingold. Um, Josh was the story editor and Andy was the head writer. But basically the three of us just sat in the writer's room you know, for months and, and, and churned out the show. Um, we were just overwhelmed by the turnout uh, for this panel because none of us really knew um, the life that undergrads had in Canada. We were all from New York and all we knew of undergrads was it was canceled by the sixth episode on MTV. Um, I knew that it was still airing on Teletoon, but I just thought it was like, oh, Teletoon's running in its filler or something. Um, so it was just, it was, we were really touched by it and immediately we just kind of launched into how do we do this, how do we get it, you know, how do we get it back. None of us own the rights to the show, um, so it was finding out how do we either acquire the rights or get permission to use the rights to do something. Uh, since then, we have uh, approached DHX, uh, it was then Decode, now DHX. They own rights on the Canadian side, and uh, we're in talks with MTV's legal department. And um, the legal department at MTV has actually been really receptive and really helpful, and they seem like they would be willing to grant us permission to do this. In return, they're going to, of course, ask for residuals and everything, but um, at least that's a start in the right direction. And uh, once we get all of that worked out legally, uh, we'll basically be launching a Kickstarter campaign um, to try to fund it through uh, fan support. Um, at this point, we're still up in the air whether or not we're going to be trying to actually fund an entire season or perhaps a one-off undergrad movie. Um, but uh, that's that's sort of where things are at right now, and uh, Josh, Andy, and I have been sort of talking about what the plot of that movie would be. Um, I don't want to give anything away. But. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Or should I just keep talking? Uh, who's your favorite voice to do? Um, that's why I just had this question. Uh, Gimpy uh, was definitely my favorite voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually... Cal was a really close second, but uh, Gimpy was, was definitely the most fun. Gimpy was the most fun to write for, um, but Gimpy killed my voice. Like, Gimpy, <laughs> I, we would record uh, an episode. I would, I would fly up to Toronto, we'd go to a voice record session, and I'd basically record all the lines for Nits for those three episodes, and then I'd do all of the Rocco lines, and then I'd do all the Cal. And by the time I got to Gimpy, it was like, yeah, my, my voice is done. Uh, and one good Gimpy rant would really 
I'd be toasted. Give me was definitely the most fun to do. <laughs> All right, great, let's go. <laughs> I've heard with the uh, like Star Trek main exploration that the guys who, who wrote the scripts, they would just sort of put in brackets like tech, tech, and then have someone at the end of the techno battle. Did you or did you or the other writers have uh, put in all like the Star Wars references just by memory, or did you have like that outsource to some? Oh, no, those were by memory. <laughs> <laughs> Except for uh, when Gimpy, uh, in the last episode, Gimpy is quoting a bunch of Star Wars lines in a row, and he's sort of trying to build the Death Star in his room, and Bump is telling him he has, to, he has to pack it, and they have to leave. And there was one line, it was like a Greedo line, and I didn't know verbatim, so I had to quickly call up my brother, who's an even more rabid Star Wars fan, and he phoned it in for us. And, but it, in the script, it was all in there, yeah. Except for, actually, the only thing that was not in the scripts were uh, the Rob Brody rants. <laughs> Josh, Josh Kagan, uh, who was the story editor, he also voiced Rob Brody, and Rob Brody was definitely based a lot on Josh, so, and Josh is great, and he can just go off and ad-lib like crazy, so he, when he did the voice, he was just like, okay, Rob Brody ad lib something here, and uh, yeah, I would say 90% of the Rob Brody lines were Josh just random on the microphone. <laughs> yeah? I always wondered what their majors were. <laughs> um, well, Nitz, Nitz, originally we were going to make Nitz uh, either an art or film student, but we didn't, we didn't want to alienate, we wanted to make him the everyman, so we didn't want to kind of commit to one specific thing for him. Uh, so we, we made him undecided, he was going to just be an undeclared uh, student, and maybe at some point during the course of those subsequent seasons that we never got to, uh, he would pick a major, but uh, in first season, he's undecided. Uh, Gimpy was definitely like a polytechnic computer arts type student. Um, you know, couldn't decide if he was going to be engineer or uh, you know internet computer programmer, but it was definitely that kind of a, a degree that he was going for. Cal, we had him in the drama program. Uh, <laughs> 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 We never really took advantage of that, and it was basically a means to have him have more contact with females uh, at State U, but uh, apparently he didn't need any help. Um, but uh, my friend that, that Cal was based on, we were in like school plays together, and not that he pursued that in college, but that was sort of where the impetus for that came from. Uh, Rocco, yeah, I don't think he had a major either. <laughs> I did not commit to a whole lot with this show. <laughs> Yep. Uh, what was your favorite episode, voice acting for, or just being a part of? Um, my favorite episode was probably the Risk episode. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, yeah. that was uh, the first episode that I actually uh, wrote um, for this, this year, the show. Um, I wrote it with our uh, head writer, Andy Reingold, but that was the first one that I actually was physically like typing on the keyboard what the characters were going to say. Up until that point, I was just in the writer room, we were just kind of developing the storylines together. Um, so that one really means a lot to me, uh, not just because of that, but because my friends and I, that's how we spent our high school years. We were not going to parties on the weekend, we were sitting in, you know, one of our friends' basements playing Risk all weekend. Um, <laughs> I really like that episode. I also really like uh, the Drunks episode. Um, that was written uh, by Josh, and, and he, uh, he actually had come up with the character of Bobby Whiskey uh, <laughs> years before undergrads. And uh, he had done a really horrible little like sketch of what Bobby Whiskey would, would look like. But, so we updated that, but basically, the, the Bobby Whiskey was, you know, a, a Josh Kagan original that uh, he allowed us to use in the show. Cool. Yeah. Was there an actual story for the nickname Nitz? Um, yeah, I actually just got asked this. Uh, there was not not a real story, but I can tell you where the name came from. Um, my friends and I in high school were big Jerky Boys fans. And um, it, we would just quote Jerky Boys endlessly. And it would be like the most subtle references. It wouldn't even be what the Jerky Boys were saying. It would be like what the person on the other end of the call was saying. We, that's how like sick we got with Jerky Boys. But there's, uh, there's a throwaway line at the end of one of the calls where uh, the guy says, uh, See you later, Nitz. 
maybe that's what he says, maybe it's not. But that's what we heard, and we just kind of ran with it. So whenever we were uh, you know, saying, all right, see you later, we was like, I see you later, it's... It is, and I, so, remember I remember that line. All right, thank you for messing me up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Nitz uh, became sort of a nickname for all of us. It was just something we would call each other. Like, hey, guy. Um, <laughs> well, so, uh, so I just decided I was going to name the main, the main character Nitz, and it was purely an inside joke. But uh, yeah. yeah. How did you come up with Danny? Both. Yeah. Uh, Dan was um, sort of based on my college roommate at the time, uh, and we, we actually became roommates after after school as well. Um, not that he only laughed, but uh, the guy likes to laugh. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so Dan was pretty much Dan. Um, Kruger was based on a friend of Josh's in college, uh, who was kind of just this you know, moody, surly, just guy that swore a lot. And, uh, yeah. Uh, so, we, we, again, it was always just taking sort of a piece of a person that we knew and blowing it up to stupid, cartoony proportions, but, uh, yeah, that's where those two, they were, like everybody else in the show, based on real people. Jesse, was she inspired by somebody? Yeah, actually, um, uh, Jesse was one of the first friends that I made uh, when I went to school, um, and uh, the girl that she was based on actually did the voice of the character on the show. Um, Weird. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, um, I'm surprised actually she agreed to do it. Back. But uh, yeah, uh, she was my first friend in college, my, definitely my first female friend uh, at that point, and um, you know, sort of a bridge to I don't need to just hang out with those three guys that I went to high school with. There are other people in the universe, and uh, you know, I can make other friends. Um, so she was sort of helped me come out of my shell a little bit. Yeah. Uh, was anyone like anyone who like was actually your friend? Like, did they see the show and go like, "Why'd you make that guy me?" Like, was anyone? Oh, oh heavens, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after the, the very first thing that I did, the, my entry to uh, MTV for the initial contest, which was just the pencil test animation. Yeah, I thought uh, the, the guy that Cal was based on was going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> they are not flattering portrayals. Of my friends. Um, and to be fair, they're not really accurate. Um, but uh, they were, you know, what I thought were loving uh, interpretations. Um, <laughs> they did not agree, uh, but uh, eventually they came around and they got behind it, and um, they were actually all there, except, I think with the exception of Rocco, who couldn't make it, they were there for the uh, premiere of the show. Um, and uh, yeah, it was really cool. And uh, to this day, I still don't think they're really happy with how they were portrayed. Uh, they've kind of accepted my apologies, and, uh, and that they're not, you know, they're not really supposed to be them per se, just, you know, spirit. Yeah. I don't want to know what Kimmy's major was. <laughs> she was a uh, drama major. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Kimmy was based on a girl uh, that I knew from high school, uh, who we were in school plays with, and uh, had a crush on, and into college, and again, it was very similar to how it played out in the midst of the show, where I only have eyes for Kimmy Burton, and uh, couldn't see sort of what's right for me. Yep. So if um, if you had to choose something besides doing voice acting, what would you decide to do or uh, pursue? I mean, I, when I was in college and at the time of doing undergrads, I wanted to be a film director. I was in I was in film program. Um, animation had been more of a hobby up until that point, but uh, as soon as I got this MTV deal, uh, that became you know my career and my focus. Um, oh. Wait, does it work? Yep. Yeah. I have to plug it in? I have to plug it in. <laughs> <laughs> you people in the back can finally hear me. 